They are handing off. That would be me. Ah, there we go. Our Lady of Chaos. You'll be happy to know that Star wore his Chaos shirt again that he may or may not have known was chaotic. But... Fantastic. <laughs> you, you fantastic, you terrible chaotic people. Don't you know what you're missing out on? Don't forget that just because we follow chaos does not mean we have forgotten the virtues. We just choose how to do it differently. Ah, good afternoon, you've everyone. Danalosia Melonomen, bienvenue, and mes amis et famille. Greetings and good morrow, friends and family. I'd like to apologize first for the background noises that are happening right now. Seems the hurricane uh, winds that uh, <laughs> passed through here knocked out our balcony, so we have the workers on that right now. But we're here today to talk about guilds. Many of you already know. But for those who do not, let me introduce myself. I am Amber Rain, High Priest of Chaos, owner, founder of Avatars Radio, and Twitch streamer for Are You Gaming, as well as the co-author of 100 Ways to Have Your Friends for Dinner, a cannibal's recipe book. For this hour, I am joined uh, by... Uh, <laughs> and you will be first on the list. Uh, for this hour, we're joined by many of the different guilds. I see that uh, Vengeance is here. And, of course, 4B, a few of the ones that were listed on the page didn't make it, so I'm going to just scratch that off my uh, my list. Uh, do, we, do any of us need to be bumped <laughs> in order to make room? We might. I know that on the list we had the Phoenix Republic, BMC, Barons League, the Syndicate, Tantalus, and I see Bear, 4B, Vengeance. Then I, I will take the opportunity, rare opportunity to step off because I see we're full up. So uh, I'm going to step off uh, and uh, leave the uh, star and others in charge from the port side. Yeah, have some lunch and soak up the booze, Richard. Exactly. The, the answer to that uh, violation, we have five recipes that require Lord British. I'm going to go ahead and uh, step out for lunch for a bit as well since uh, apparently the Queen of Chaos and her many minions have things well in hand. The Queen of Chaos is a sexy Zeppelin. I am not a big blimp, just saying. I'm the High Priestess of Chaos, not the Queen of it. Um, unless, yeah, something happened that I'm not aware of. <laughs> anyway, guys, for this hour, we're going to be covering a guild, a topic that has been somewhat touchy for many. In the past few, not only months, but years, I have seen a number of guilds show up some made it and some did not. My biggest question has always been, why is this? What makes this guild work and this one fall apart? To me, a guild is more than just a group of random people thrown under a title. A guild is a family. And those here with me today and those watching, whether in IRC or away from IRC in-game, when you look at your own guilds, I ask, do you also feel the same? Is your guild about the family and the friends? Now on the side of guilds, many have been requesting an ability to, uh, well, first, you know what, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves. Who all is here? I see Phoenix Republic has shown up. So please feel free to introduce yourselves. Uh, I suppose I'll start. Hello, everyone. Uh, Ryan Collins, a.k.a. Wrath Phoenix, Chasm Phoenix Fire and Game, head of the Phoenix Republic, which is both a guild in itself as well as an alliance of guilds and towns that represent within the, uh, the game and where headquartered over in the island of Elysium. Vengeance, would you like to? I'm so confused. Uh, I'm Duke Violation. I am a guild master of Order of Vengeance. We're actually a uh, guild that has been around since Ultima Online, and we've traveled through three different... Um, MMOs together, so we're primarily uh, online gaming only, and we are focused on combat and competitive gameplay. So, Amazing. not sure. I haven't checked this mic yet. Sorry, Lotus. Muted me as soon as I got in. Uh, I'm Kevo. I'm with uh, Moongate Travelers. I'm one of about eight leaders in the guild. We're kind of quiet, uh, semi-on professionals that try to game as much as we can. Uh, definitely our guild is about family. We're hooked up with Facebook. 
we have the website we're hooked up online with just the regular forums uh, yeah we're always chatting I should mention that I'm the governor of the town of Rift Sand, which is way, way up north beside absolutely nothing right now. And it's awesome. It's a beautiful location. We're really happy about it. Thank you. And I see that Rhea from 4B is here. Would you like to say something about the 4B and how much of a family they are to you? Yeah. Hello, I'm Sandaria Tiarama, short Ria. I'm the leader of the new Britannia Builders of Beauty Using Bewilderment. Our guide name says everything. We are mostly focused on decoration and breaking the limits. Also, uh, we have the problem with the name tag. It's too small for our name, so we have to shorten to 4B. And we are one of the small skills, but we are a real family. Tech. I think you're still muted. Okay, well you're fixing that. We'll we'll go ahead. Um, with Bears Tavern. Hello everyone, uh, my name's Malus and I run the Bear Tavern, which is a pub, basically, and that's as complicated as it gets. Um, we, uh, family is a huge thing for us. Uh, we've had members since the early days of 2013 and uh, we've got quite a few that have stuck around, unsurprisingly. Um, aside from the tavern, we're also a, a proud member of the Bear League, which is a, a group of bizarre um, organizations and uh, landowners. The best of the year. I remember when the Bears Tavern was just a tavern. You've grown so big, it's amazing. Yeah, I get scared every day. We um we do something new and unusual. So when when Tech is ready, we'll have Tech introduce himself. Um, there has been something that has been mentioned a whole lot lately, and it's uh, yes. uh ah we hear Tech. I'm going to shut up and let you introduce yourself. Okay, well that's not well. I'm Tech. I'm with the Guild profession the Professionals PRX. Uh, we started a guild in 1999 in Ultima Online, and have been a big PVP guild ever since then. And uh, glad to be here. Great to have you all here. Uh, and actually, I know almost every single one of you, so it's, it's awesome. Um, many, as I was saying, many of the guilds and people in general have been asking for something that has yet to be put in, and we're all really hoping it will be. So we're going to be looking at you, Star, for this one. Uh, on the side of guilds, many have been requesting the ability to have multiple guilds. Similar to that in Guild Wars 2 and other games that have done it well. What are your thoughts and when are we going to get them? <laughs> well, uh, that's a great question. Um, and uh, while, it, yes, it can be done and other products have done it well, uh, it is a challenge, uh, especially when PvP is in the mix. Um, and so that. The ability to be in multiple guilds uh, and having PvP as part of that is the complicating factor. So, because as many of you know, we do we do plan to allow guilds to fight each other uh, and declare war and have winning conditions and things like that. And so, multiple participation <laughs> participation in multiple guilds makes that slightly more complicated. So, we don't yet have a solve for that. Uh, it's something that's definitely on our wish list. Uh, but we don't yet have a solve for that. Okay, with it not being solved for multiple guilds, has there been any consideration put in for per possibly just social tagging? This being so you're not in a different guild, but you're able to show, for example, I am part of the Phoenix Republic proudly. However, I'm also part of Avatar's Radio and the New Britannia Theatre Troupe. When I'm working, I'd like to be able to show my working tag. When I'm not, I'd like to show my guild tag. 
is is there any chance that this might be a thing instead of multiple guilds? Oh, that's interesting. So uh, if I understand maybe the idea, and I see someone in chat mentioning the, using the word societies or some sort of uh, some sort of social grouping that would not allow, that wouldn't be tied to the PvP system. Uh, that's an interesting idea. So uh, maybe there's some sort of, uh, you know, parallel or uh, tangential kind of system that wouldn't ever be part of PvP or anything like that, uh, that, that you could participate in. Um, that wouldn't affect that. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll, we'll think about that. Fantastic. Um, any, anybody else? I know that Rhea actually had brought that up, that she wanted to uh, be able to tie it to her town and possibly have towns be like their own little group of uh, guilds and whatnot. Um, I also asked the community for a few questions and received a couple of them. And uh, one of the people that actually posted a lot of questions was Spoon. And for some reason, I love that name. I'm not entirely sure why. I might be a bit biased by the Chaos Spoon. But anyway, uh, we have public chess, and Spoon was curious when these might be able to be set for guild only so that we can set out public cash chests that only guilds can access. Uh, yeah, so we, we have a, a permission system specific to cash chests on uh, our backlog. Um, we were hoping to actually get it in R21, but it slipped out. Um, but we might, we're going to see if we can get an R22 and at the very latest R23. And uh, and permissions in the not just for guilds, but permissions tied just to like the in addition to guilds, the same permission levels that we have for like say player property implement the same kind of set, set up for that. But also guild specific too. Uh, we also eventually want to make it so. Uh, vendors, uh, player vendors could have guild only pricing structures. So uh, as a way for uh, you to get dues out of your members or, or membership in your guild, uh, you could set up a vendor where to everyone else, uh, you know, that, that vendor sells goods at a certain price, uh, but to guild members, it sells it like at a heavy discount, uh, but it's an indirect way for the guild to gather gold. But uh, not just like a membership fee, but more of a, like a cycling through gear and things like that. So my last question, actually, and then I'm going to ask everyone else how they feel about it, um, any questions that they might have for you. But um, this one came up specifically, again, from, from Rhea Spoon and a couple others. Uh, will towns similar to how guild chats are created, and they're actually mentioning it in the sidebar here too, uh, will they be able to have a town chat um, similar to guild chat, but so it's, it's again, may be tied to PvP, but it's uh, their own chat system. Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. So uh, the, we, we should totally add another set of channels to chat related to towns. One, uh, like, and, and have it, you know, different levels of that. So like people you set up as stewards and trustees and things like that would be on one channel. Um, maybe the entire town would be another channel, et cetera. That's a great idea. Um, we'll get that in the queue. No idea when, but uh, that is a great idea. Now might be a great time for your uh, your uh, celebrity. Oh yeah, my celebrity phrase. catchphrase. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, for those of you, uh, Watching us for the first time, I have a celebrity catchphrase, uh, which is "Don't lawyer me, bro." Uh, <clears throat> which we're you know we're in a very open iterative development model, where we get feedback from you guys, we iterate on that, <clears throat> we have discussions about game design, fully transparent in the open, and uh, <clears throat> sometimes we'll talk about ideas that don't quite make it into the game, or they change by the time we get into the game, and so. You don't lawyer me, bro, is just a way to say, hey, we want to have these discussions without being tied to very specific implementation. Uh, that doesn't mean we're trying to get out of anything or whatever, but it, it really is a, we really, I really like that town chat idea. I'm not sure how it, when it's going to go in, but it's something that we will try for. And I see some other questions plugging in uh, from uh, IRC uh, violations saying uh, from Matthias. Will there be plans to log transactions in public shared chess? 
Uh, yeah, that is also a feature on our backlog that we want to get in as well, uh, having a log associated with uh, chess, uh, both, uh, and eventually we would like it to be a setting that you can put on. So there would be one that would be like an auto log, but then another one would be maybe a voluntary one or like a sign up book or something like that where people could uh, voluntarily like leave notes or signature or whatever when they use the chest. Uh, and then there was uh, Rebel Weasel, also from IRC. Uh, Violation, thanks for funneling these into the chat. Uh, would there be guild property or guild dedicated housing? If so, what chapter would we expect that feature? So, uh, yes, we do plan to have uh, guild housing um, and uh, guild banking and things like that. Uh, and uh, additionally, uh, we also want to give players the ability to set any player housing as guild property. So uh, you could think of this, we're going to call it, we call it like chapter houses. So that means that uh, your guild wouldn't have to be geographically concentrated in a single area. So uh, you're, you're, you could have a chapter house in different cities, uh, different towns across the map. Uh, and so that's, that's something that we want to support. Uh, so Violation is doing such a wonderful job um, catching the questions in IRC. Would you like to read some of those, Violation? Because you're absolutely fantastic when you do that, and uh, you're catching them. So, <laughs> um, Will we get features such as guild crests that can be stamped onto things? Banners, tapestries, carpets, cloaks, etc. So that is one of the most requested features for guilds, uh, for sure. Uh, uh, like, in fact, I was uh, at the Syndicate's convention this weekend, and that's the one I got quartered about the most. Uh, and so uh, we definitely want to support something like that, yes. Uh, can we have the ability to drag a chat window out from the current chat tab? So I want to be clear about this. They're not asking for a second tab like you have it right now. They want to actually have a second user interface box so you can see the two different tabs at the same time scrolling at the same time. So for example, they could put their local defense up on the right and their combat log on the left or their guild chat on the left and their party chat on the right, you know. So two different boxes. Yeah, so windows, not tabs. Right. Uh, yeah, so great suggestion. Uh, uh, that one's been asked before as well. Um, uh, we want to support that, yes. Not sure when. All right, and, and Tech, you had a couple questions that I would assume you'd like to ask, so please feel free to poke at them. Yeah. Like yeah, when you make PvP? Yeah, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Actually, one's PvP, one's mainly like crafting. Okay. I guess, so I've asked this a couple times now, Mr. Darkstar. So I'm from a guild, PR, PRX, the professionals. We've been a PvP guild for forever at this point, and I... Our guild wants to love Shroud the Avatar, and we want to get, get our guild excited about it, but right now, it's hard to do that. And I, I would like you to sell it, sell it for me. How can a PvP guild be, uh, be interested and excited about Shroud the Avatar? What are the selling points? You sell it. Yeah, that's just totally fair. Like, PvP has not gotten love in a very long time, and uh, we're, we totally own that. Um, we... We, we know it's it's gonna it needs to happen. Uh, we as you guys know we've been changing some very fundamental things uh, for combat, including moving to a use based system. We made a lot of fundamental changes to the way combat map is working, uh, and so we didn't want to pile on PvP features on top of that. Uh, but we definitely want to make PvP part of the game. We want to make it uh, you know we want to make it interesting. Um, so. Uh, like we've talked about before, uh, and none of this is in there yet, so this is all, like, future. Uh, but for episode one, we definitely want to make things like the open PvP zones actually really be the highest resource yield areas of the game. Uh, so there's a reason to go there. Um, once we have uh, regional economies and regional scarcity and abundance of resources, that's going to be even more critical because certain parts of the map will have better resources of one kind than another. And so... Uh, having uh, not necessarily control of those areas, but uh, keeping, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, you're either uh, having a strong presence in that space and either helping people get into that space or get out of it or, you know, uh, attacking people who try to get into it and taking their stuff. Uh, we definitely want to do that. And one of the things we've considered uh, 
for those open PvP zones is uh, having a slightly different looting rule there where uh, things you loot in that space uh, are things that you harvest or gather or get in that space are freely lootable by other people in that space if they kill you. So, uh, so if you go in to harvest those resources, uh, those resources are freely lootable by other people if they attack you and kill you, as opposed to things maybe you brought in with you where we're currently thinking we'll limit it to just looting a single item off the course. Uh, the idea is like any resources you gather in that space will be completely lootable. But what about just like big the big meta ideas? What could a guild accomplish? Is it they take over a castle or they take over a zone they own? Something, something. The big selling points. Right. These are kind of small. What are the big ideas? Well, so uh, one thing we haven't talked about publicly. Uh, so this will be the first time. Uh, one of our uh, designs that we've just spun up, uh, starting to work out some details of. Uh, for the end game for groups is something we're calling great projects. Uh, and the idea is that there would be, uh, basically, right now we've, we've started to introduce a little bit of boss mechanics, but I would consider the, peop the guys we put in right now sort of mini bosses. Uh, but imagine like a real boss that takes like, you know, a, a, a large group a long time to defeat. And that boss would be defending a cache of uh, items, including, uh, for lack of a better word, a machine. Uh, and that machine uh, would have components and materials that it needed to work. And uh, that machine you would set up in your guild space. Um, and uh, once you build that machine, it would then offer a buff to your group for a certain amount of time before it break. And the assembly of that machine and the components that go in it would be completely randomized. So it would be completely different every time. And so. Uh, you're, you're be incentivized to build up, a, uh, you know, an inventory of these components and materials because you're never going to know which one you're going to need to get this machine going. Um, and it, if your guild is PvP or at war with another guild, that guild can actually take part, damage your machine, take parts out of your machine, or even take the machine entirely for their own. So that's okay. that's one of the meta sort of in-game ideas. And one of the things we talked about is making that sort of nested. So that one one thing the machine might just like uh, you know a low level machine might just give you guys like a boost to XP gain or it might give you access to uh, you know some rare resources or things like that but it might actually be a gate to another area to fight another boss to get another component for another bigger machine and so and that that these would net and and you would need a series of these to get to the next level to get to the next level to get to the next level to get an ever greater benefit and if you're engaged in PvP. Uh, you, you, again, you could fight over these things. Well, that, that leads to my second question was just the idea of uh, guilds being able to group build as a guild, build stuff, build up uh, instead of like player owned towns, there's a lot of opportunities there to build stuff for the town, but guilds especially, you could take that opportunity. I, that's really my second question was the build so you could build that, uh, the big mech or whatever, how you described it. The great, so, yeah, the great projects, the building the, these machines. And yeah. so that's, that's, we're kind of trying to do both of those in one. So that's kind okay. of right now our big idea for group play and PvP and group building are these great projects. So think of them as like big monuments or machines or some combination, like, think, you know, using our sort of steampunk fantasy tech, uh, et, et cetera. So uh, that's that's kind of that's, – that's the current thing. And it's really early. I mean, like we literally just started – discussing this a couple of weeks ago. This is the first time we're even talking about it publicly. Um, uh, so uh, that was a great, great pitch to me. So I appreciate it. <laughs> I'd like to thank you guys for keeping everything on Guild topic too. It's appreciated because I know when we get some of the PvP guys around, it can get a little torn out of here. So thank you so much for keeping it to PvP. All right, excuse me too, Guild. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rhea, did you have a few questions? Sure, I have. The first one is um, also directed at Star. Um, when will we see uh, improvements to regulate the guild? So you can say, see one was the uh, people uh, last time on that we can give them text that it is an ultra or something like that that you can can make comments on them or see where they are uh, yeah so general improvements to guilds uh, like 
we definitely want to add more layers, uh, you know, more uh, more structured officers, uh, things like succession rules, things like logs, things like messaging, all that stuff. Uh, those are definitely on deck, uh, and probably in the R23 time frame, R23, R24, something like that. So one of my guild members asked uh, if we will get coat of arms for guilds, so we can put them on banners or guild house. Yeah, and uh, I think I, I think I was talking about that earlier. That's definitely like the most requested guild feature so far is uh, guild press, and that's definitely something that we want to uh, uh, support. Not sure when. Probably closer to the end of the year. Okay, that's for me for first. Okay. All right, so before we go on to uh, Kazen, who has a few questions for you as well, I believe we have a prize of a poster to give away. Oh, yes. Um, if you'd like to show that. And then, uh, Lum, if you would be so kind as to use your magic on how you uh, get winners, that would be fantastic. Magic, magic. magic. It's chaos magic. magic. I thought you'd like that. You were asking us to implement it. I, I have been asking for a while. Where is it? <laughs> Am I, can you see it? I'm holding it in front of my face, so it's hard for me to see. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. I want it. Wait, I can't have it. I'm the host. Darn it. <laughs> okay. Uh, via the magic of chaos, uh, the winner of the poster is Eniko. E-N-I-K-O. Eniko. You are the winner of a signed uh, Stephen Daniele original Shroud of the Avatar or Shattered Moon poster. I think we also have a store credit to give away. So if Dallas would be, I mean, if uh, Star would be so kind, uh, do you want me to give away one or two? Uh, one store credit. Okay. Confused just one. Not confused just one. Confused just one. You win ten dollars in store credit. And with that, I'll toss it back to our uh, Lady of Guild Chaos. <laughs> Thank you, Lum. Appreciate that. All right. Well, uh, Kazen, you had a few questions for Star or for the rest of us in general. Do remember that Star's not the only one we can poke. If you have something for the mass general, you can ask right. those, of course, too. Um, and apologize for the noise in the background. I'm also fielding a work call while doing this because huh. multitasking is in my blood. Yeah, well, I'm seriously. So, two questions, I think. The first question is, um, when are we going to see, yes. or are we going to see, yes. some sort of system to formalize alliances between guilds and maybe have communication methods through a chat channel, or is that too, I mean, is that outside of your line of thinking, or might we see that? Uh, we definitely want to facilitate something like that. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it's, again, uh, slightly complicated by uh, PvP and things like that, so uh, we'd have to keep it pretty homogenous. So, for instance, like, if, if a guild is going to participate in PvP, then anybody allied with them would also have to be participating as well. Otherwise, it leads right. them for way too many exports. So, uh, but barring that... Uh, we would absolutely, uh, we absolutely want to support alliances of groups. Well, my other question actually is, uh, I know that the guild system still has to be built out a lot, and there's there's some things you want to do. Have you given thought to things like um, being able to set like titles? Like I could assign titles to different people within the guild, or maybe multi-layered officerships. Yeah, we rather than having an officer and a member and a leader. Yeah, we definitely want to uh, support having uh, a, a more customizable and complex officer structure. So that's definitely something that we want to support. Absolutely. And I actually have a third uh, minor question, feature request, whatever you want to call it. Um, you saw the pain in hometown of adding individuals to a list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about the ability to, um, for property or towns or whatever, like say in my town, I wanted to add a whole guild, like just add a guild with a guild tag or property. Being able to do something like that, is that feasible? Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be a sort of... The only concern I would have about that is, uh, you know, if someone was living in your town, if you let, other, if you let people that were non-guild members in the town... 
that could be problematic for those people. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying um, guilds as an example. If I want to go to a house and we declare a guild list, I have one or two ways. If I'm a multi-hundred person guild, sure. having to add each individual person to that permissions list versus saying, hey, I can flag this, my guild or not, and they can get yeah, permission. So that, that, that's how we want chapter houses to work. So that's okay, how you do it. So if you flag your house as a guild house, then you automatically enable guild permissions in that property. Okay. That's all I have. But again, we don't have that feature built yet, but that's the plan. <laughs> right. Again, another DLMB. Um, okay, thank you, Kazen. Uh, Bear's Tavern, Malice, you had a couple questions. Again, whether they'd be for Star or they'd be for the general populace, please feel free to ask them. Okay, a couple of really quick ones. Uh, first one, uh, will we see any kind of cross-platform support for guild management, such as an app or a web interface? Uh, sorry, there was a bunch of noise. Someone was uh, making coffee. Uh, so uh, the question was, uh, when we'll see cross, I think it was cross-platform before, or like an yeah. app before? Yeah, like an app or a, or a web interface or something along those lines. So if a if a guild starts getting really busy and a guild officers are off doing other stuff, is there any way they can interact with their guild or the community through uh, forum chat or through organizing or administering their their their, their guild, as it were? Uh, yeah, we definitely talked about a, a web interface for sure for guilds for uh, rosters and membership and. Uh, you know, all that kind of information. So we definitely want to expose that uh, eventually to the website, for sure. Um, as far as an app, um, right now that hasn't been in our bandwidth, uh, but, you know, as our funding has been doing very well, thank you all of you, uh, and as test to my uh, increased slurring over the course of the day, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to tell how well we're doing funding-wise. Uh, but uh, we, we've been able to staff up, so we have a little more bandwidth for that, so that's more in the realm of possibility than it has been in the past. Right, thank you very much. Um, second question is, um, will we see any support from Portal Arium in terms of guilds running their own events, say a really big event? Is there any way that Portal Arium can support that in any way? Uh, what kind of event other than the ones you guys are already running? Yeah, sure. I mean, in terms either in terms of um, uh, in terms of advertising or actually helping facilitate in-game events through characters or or Steam placements and that sort of thing. Uh, well, you know, one thing again, don't lawyer me, bro. Uh, but uh, one feature we've talked about uh, that we want to get in uh, at some point, uh, uh, especially for uh, guild versus guild kind of stuff, but even for uh, just regular PvP or even just for grins. Uh, is the idea of uh, decor uh, what we call spawner decos. So decorations that have uh, spawner values attached to it, uh, associated with them. So imagine like a crypt, and when you put that crypt down, that crypt will generate, you know, 10 skeletons over X amount of time. Or uh, if you put down, uh, you know, spider eggs, they'll generate spiders, uh, et cetera. And so you could place these down on like in your basement or your property uh, in some cases, like for guilds, it would be like defensive uh, techniques, basically like, you know, these are creatures guarding your spaces. Uh, or if you want to be running, if not PvP, if you want to run some event, like a PvE, like run a dungeon run through your basement. Uh, so uh, something like that where you could fill it up with creatures. So that, that's something that we, we've talked about wanting to do. Uh, it's, it's a bit complicated, and there's some balance issues there, and uh, there's some griefing uh, problems associated with that, uh, but if you know we give uh, validation like we do when you enter a PvP zone that say, hey, you're about to enter a basement that a player is stocked full of monsters, are you okay with that? Uh, maybe that's okay. Cool, thank you very much. Um, final question: um, Are we going to see any situations where guilds are held accountable for their actions in game, either that they're really, really good or really, really bad? Uh, so some sort of uh, extension of the sort of virtue reputation system that would go beyond the character and uh, affect the entire guild. Um, guild by association, in other words. Yeah. Uh, or virtue by association, you know, in the case of guilds being really good. Uh, maybe that's really interesting. Uh, we haven't talked about it before, but that's a really cool idea. 
Cool. Right. That's it from us. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Bears Tavern. I love that, that group. They're just amazing. And I'm waiting for another Bears Tavern brawl. Just saying. Just saying. Um, <laughs> we, we, have, we have two more people that have a few questions as well as IRC ones. I know that we're running out of time. But uh, I'm going to open up for the Moongate Travelers, who are a great group. For those of you who know who the Moongate Travelers are, you really ought to. They are a fantastic group. And Guild and Family. They are family too. Ask any of them. Please take it away. I didn't specifically have a ton to say other than to thank David Rock, who isn't here right now. And I think he's storing up game time because he recently had a baby boy. So uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons why we're able to stick around and sort of maintain ourselves is that the eight of us are constantly working on new member applications and chatting. All, everyone knows probably the engine website. So. Um, we, yeah, we are definitely family. I don't really have a lot to say. I don't really need to steal the show for very long other than uh, you should. We've had some stuff in the past. Everyone's probably aware of it uh, with regards to some trolls and some griefing and problems. You should not get any crap from Moongate Travelers. We're honestly a bunch of softies. So if you're having some sort of troll issues, with someone with an MGD tag, just, it's not us. Whisper us and let us know. We'll take care of it. Trolls in an online game? I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't know how that, we actually like, we now have, uh, when you when people come to our website to log in or to uh, join us, we, we have to meet them in game. The whole bunch of us have to interact with them. We have admin discussions about whether or not they're some sort of alt that's gonna try to cause it. Like we are really trying to not attract trouble uh, and trying to just uh, you know encourage new players and people who want a really casual group to hang out with so but it, it's a bit of work I, I might be a bit biased on thinking MGT is one of the best guilds out there only because my big brother is a part of it uh, <laughs> as left he is alright uh, last but not least and one of the most important to me violation you had a few questions please feel free yeah, so um, my biggest thing that I look at when I look at my guild is it's uh, about socializing. And I feel like two of the socializing elements are really missing right now. Uh, it's the ability to communicate with people when you're not right next to them um, and when you're not online. And um, what I mean by that is... Uh, the Whispers, I'm not a big fan of. They have to be in game because of the era of gaming that we're in today. If you don't have Whispers in the game, gamers just won't play. So for those of us that don't want to be whispering 30 different people, 30 different things, hey, everybody that's on my friends list getting the updates about my events. <laughs> um, the uh, great option there is to do something like a message board or a mailbox. You guys plan to put that stuff in. Yeah. So what I haven't heard anything about, though, is when you're offline. What about message of the day? So every time a guild member logs in, they automatically get a message that you set to update them on information. Yeah, that, that's a great idea and something that we could add to like guild management interface and just uh, a message that you could update. Um, and we do want to support asynchronous. In general, we want support for asynchronous messaging, any period, whether it's just for guilds or for groups or just player to player uh, as it is, because that, that is a constant issue of being able to uh, leave messages for people who are offline or even or even trades or things like that. So we, we do want to support something like uh, messaging asynchronously and I, I love the message of the day idea for guilds and groups. I think that's great. Do we, uh, just because I have you here, do we know when you plan on doing message boards and mailboxes? What releases? Uh, I don't have a release assigned to that yet, but probably closer to the end of the year. Sorry, people are giving me crap for having a cat tower in the chat. So this is Indy. She's my six-month-old Bengal. Everyone's Hi. got them. <laughs> Beautiful cat. <laughs> Tech. Uh, violation, was that all you, ha you had? Uh, a lot of my curious stuff related directly to guilds had actually been answered by previous people. So, yeah, this is that's great. Yeah, that's where I'm sitting, too. I'm All my questions, actually, that's why I opened it up to everyone else. They all asked them what I wanted to know. Um, 
Star or anyone else have anything you'd like to say? Well, I, I just want to, I mean, I'm, I can, you know, I say, I say it a lot, and I, but I don't think I could say it enough. I, I, I am really just amazed by this community. I mean, the level of organization you guys have and the, the, the level of dedication and, and just the support you guys give each other and other players, I, I, I really have never seen anything like it. I mean, it, it is... It, it, it is unlike any other community I've ever seen. Uh, and, and, and the passion that all of you guys have about, uh, you know, making the game better and making the game better for each other and the, the players and things like that, it's, it, it's just amazing and humbling. So uh, thank you, really. You know, it's, I don't know what else to say, but just how amazed I am. By it. And entertain. I mean, you guys are really entertaining. Like, you know, we try to be entertaining. Like, you know, that's our job is to be entertainers. But you guys are at least as good, if not better, than anything we do for entertainment-wise. Like, it, it is, you, you are constantly amusing us. And amusing each other, more importantly. I'd actually flip that back at you, and I think everybody here would parrot this and say that uh, I've never seen a game in development that the developers have been so open to talk to the players. And... Uh, to me, what you contribute to a lifetime gamer like myself that I've never been able to experience before, uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate how much you show us on the development process. So, Yeah, this is, this is the first game I've actually done any beta, pre-alpha testing for, and I've done it for a few. This is the first one where the dev team has been so open, so honest with us, been right there, listens to us. I mean, if it wasn't for your hard work, we wouldn't have a world to be playing in to be able to do what we're doing. So as much as we're doing what we might be doing, we couldn't do it without you guys having first created not only a world and a game, but a home for our families. So our thanks are, are to you guys. Well, and um, remember that when it takes longer because we're doing that. So that, that's because <laughs> because uh, being this responsive takes a little bit longer than normal game development. But oh, I see we have some more questions. So uh, Rebel Weasel wanted to know if there's a chance to reserve our guild names. Yeah. So part of that um, <clears throat> part of that web interface for guilds is well, <clears throat> as you guys might realize, we we even though we've done multiple character wipes, we haven't been wiping the social server. So all that social data has remained intact for a while. Uh, and so uh, as far as uh, name preservations, right now <clears throat> we're not sure when or if we're going to do a social wipe at all. So, uh, But if there are issues with guild name and harassment and things like that, just give us give us a information and support, and we'll, we'll take care of that for sure. Well, that, that answers a good question for mine, too, that I had is, when somebody else decides they want to be Amber Rain, who am I going to stab? No, uh, w one of my last questions that I personally have, and then I'm done, is uh, titles. Now, I know that we have many titles that are already pre-designed uh, for us to be able to wear that go with our pledges. Will we be able to get custom uh, titles. For example, I'd really like to see a High Priestess of Chaos above my head. Will these be able to be done at any time for self, guild, anything? I mean, anything is possible. I mean, we, we definitely have uh, the technology to provide custom uh, titles. Like, for instance, I mean, that's technically what my title is Region is. I mean, that's a custom one-off title, so we have the tech for that. Uh, you know, we, of course, have to be very careful of that because, uh, you know, uh, in games like this, we get a lot of cries of favoritism and things like that. And, you know, uh, we, we consider it more of a meritocracy. So uh, those who contribute to the game get rewarded for it. Uh, and so whenever I get calls of, of favoritism, I, I, my response is always, well, it's meritocracy. Uh, those who contribute get rewarded. So definitely within the realm of possibility. I mean, like we were talking about earlier, though, uh, part of the customizability we want for guilds is that officer structure that would come along with a way, a customizable officer structure that would come with titles that the guild members could display. Now we'd have to blacklist and whitelist because, you know, you know, we want to, you know, I don't, I don't know if we, 
Cockhammer would be an acceptable guild title you know, <laughs> that someone walk around with. Even if they might want it a lot. Oh, wait. That's when I'm supposed to say warning. Dead silence. I've it is. Room. Oh, my gosh. Awkward silence. Everyone. Um, I actually am out of questions. I have nothing left. So I guess since Violation asked and we go off topic, no, we can't talk about PvP. No. No, we got a whole, we got a whole <laughs> segment for that later. Yeah, and uh, apparently he's leading it, so that's awesome. How, um, uh, I, have Ross, one person, I, I have one person who is trying to join. I'd like to get them in before we finish up, if that's possible. If I could have someone uh, who's already asked their questions drop, that would be amazing, because uh, we are full right now, and so they are unable to get in. Thank you, Brian. There was something that came in from our last host, Lump. He was a little disappointed that he did not get to ask this before he was shoved out the door. So I'm going to ask it for him. It doesn't really have anything to do with guilds, but he would like to know, since he is the director of Wiggle, if he can get you guys to wiggle for him. <laughs> wiggle. Uh, what does this entail? Am I supposed to just wiggle like that? Is that wiggling? There, I'm, I'm sure he will be happy now. <laughs> so, uh, something that is, uh, I was going to bring up in the next hour that is heavily related to guilds is center points on NPC properties that head up regions. So in Grunwald, we have the NPC town of Desolus, and there's going to be a lot of people to go to Desolus. Will guilds and player town owners and player-run towns that operate within towns have some way to publicize who they are and where they are within the NPC towns? Um, like maybe a guild registrar right next to them, a registered guilds in our region? Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, you know, so uh, if uh, certainly if there's a uh, guild registrar in the town where you know you purchase your guild and things like that, that person should also list the guild list guilds. Uh, but you know, we've also talked about having like uh, message boards in towns, uh, also the ability for town criers to provide that kind of information as well. Uh, so we definitely should, we definitely want to support something like that for sure. Did we get the person who was trying to join uh, in? I don't see the new person yet. And a quick question I know for, there's a lot of solo players and a lot of people that aren't in guilds. Is all of our work as guilds uh, going to affect that solo player experience? Is there, or there's single player online and then offline. How are we going to not interfere with their game? Uh, well, for single player offline, there's absolutely no way for you to interfere with them because like you're you know it's literally single player offline but for like single player owned towns don't show up and all sorts of things don't yeah in single player offline you won't see player owned towns uh, and in single player online uh, I mean you will see guild presence you just won't see guild members like you'll see their property you'll see their name appearing in places their vendors will be around things like that uh, so I mean, They'll appear kind of like NPCs in their way. Right, but you want yeah. some players. Okay. Uh, Question in from Blake Blackstone. Will there be a limit to guild size? This is something we're actually interested in too with AR. Um, will there be a limit to guild size? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think so, but I mean... There might be some reason at some point to do that, but I'm not sure. The only way I could think of it would be for PvP, maybe. But no, I don't. We don't plan on imposing any limits to guild size. If you did, you might want to ask the BMC how big their guild is, since they have the biggest one so far. I actually have the guilds list up on uh, SotoWiki, and BMC updated it a couple days ago. Let me go back to that tab. Uh, they have 569 current registered members, and the second closest is the Bear Tavern with 298 registered members. Wow. So. Yeah, the, the BMC is pretty big. Wow. Amazing. 
Well, this has been great, guys. Um, uh, I think we have an opportunity to uh, get back on time with our uh, segments. Amazing. So well done, guilds. That's how organized you guys are. You got us back on schedule. We're not That's drinking. how orderly I am. Oh, my God, no. We're all sober. Okay, then we'll, I want to ask one last question, which is a good one. Will we be able to get summoning points for events when we could start events or want to have yeah, something where we have to summon many people at once? Uh, yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, that, that, that's come up a lot since we started imposing fast travel uh, restrictions. Will there be uh, a way for to get large group events together quickly that wouldn't that would that wouldn't be restricted by that system and uh, yeah maybe there's some sort of group summon uh, that has a super long cooldown uh, that would that that would help facilitate that kind of kind of thing so uh, yeah all right one last question. Was Sorry, like, guys. Really, really quick one. Um, say somebody comes up to tavern and doesn't pay their bar tab and runs away. Can I flag or can the guild flag individuals uh, with a reputation that says we trust them or we don't trust them? Uh, not through a formalized game system because that would be so amazingly grievable. Uh, you you could do that socially, but not systemically. No worries. Thanks anyway. All right, cool. All right, I, w I would like to first say that just because we're on time does not in any way make us orderly. Uh, second, I would like to thank uh, Portalarium Star, Fire Lotus uh, Lum for hanging out with us and the rest of the community for everything you guys do. It's been a real pleasure over the last two years to be a part of not just this game, but this entire mass family. Shadow the Avatar. It's a guild all in itself. So thank you. Anyone else wants to say goodbye? Thank you so much, guys, on behalf of everyone in the community. Much appreciated. And yeah, keep up the good work. We're right behind you. Uh, yeah, thank you. And I hope Darkstar gets hammered with a with many more drinks there. You got a long ways to go, buddy. Hi. How are you? All right.